Hey, Can Do It, Rick's here, and we have another artist critique, no, drawing critique, and we're going to be talking about in this video, lighting. Here we have another subject for our discussion. Here's the original photo. Here's the artist's rendition with graphite and carbon pencils. Nice, huh? This guy has talent. As many of our artists have that upload their drawings on the Ricks Can Do It Realistic Drawing Group on Facebook. Now, let's examine this for a little bit. The drawing, that's this one over here. When you look at the two, that's pretty awesome, huh? I know there's a lot of you out there go are going, hey, I wish I could draw like that. And I completely understand because this is very good. As a matter of fact, uh, this was a commission job. So the artist is getting paid for this. So well done. Now, I'd mention who it is, but I haven't actually been told, you know, hey, you can mention my name, so, eh, you know. Uh, but you come onto our forum, you know, our group, and uh, if you're an artist, of course, you know, interested in drawing like this, and you'll find out who that is. But anyway, let's just take a look at this, okay, because you might be wondering, well, how can this possibly be leveled up and that's what the subject of this video is all about because although it is really really nicely done can you tell that it is a drawing yeah yeah it's definitely a drawing you wouldn't mistake that for a photo of, a, of the dog you you'd say yeah that's a drawing and you'd say yeah that's a photo so that's what we're all about, is just bringing that up to the next level. And in this case, it really comes down to, if you Nikki pick, how to work with lighting. All right, so let's get right into the lighting part. Take a look, for example, at this area right here. Do you see that? Notice that it's very dark. It's the shadow of this dog because the light is coming from this angle this way. You can tell because the shadow is like this. So the lighting, of course, is going to be perpendicular, right? It's going to be coming from this direction. And you can see that this whole side of the Poochie is dark, okay? You have it dark right there. You have it dark right there. Now over here, unfortunately, the artist did not depict that strong enough. Now notice I didn't say didn't depict it because he did, just not strong enough. And that's something that a lot of artists fail to do is, is they, they kind of like, well, I, wanna, I want more to show through. And unfortunately that kind of takes away. Like if you look here, clearly, you can see that he has taken into account the shadow, right? Look at that. He's taken account of the shadow. But you can see that it is much lighter than the original, and you can see all the grass underneath. Okay, that's cool. But all this is lighter, much lighter in the fur than here. So it is missing here, and it's really missing right there. See, look at this right here. And then you have here. Okay. Now up here, it's just a matter of that's the color of the fur. But there is a slight difference, of course, in the tone. It's just mildly lighter here. Um, and the other thing too, but that's not the subject of this video. But another thing too is when you look at the photo and you look at the fur, 
The fur looks soft and everything because there is kind of a blur to it with the with the photograph. You don't see distinct lines and and I as I talk about in a lot of my critique and drawing videos is that you don't want harsh lines. You really want to avoid those. And in here we do have a little more defined lines. Now the fur was really done well. There's no doubt about it. It was done well. But, you know, for me personally, I mean, it, this becomes a matter of, of taste. I would try to diffuse this a little bit and soften it out. But that's not the subject of this video. I mean, there are little things that I can point out. It's, it's a lot easier to critique something than actually draw something, you know. So, uh, I could sit there and, and point things out, but, eh. That's really not the big deal. I mean, you know, like the the mouth here, you know, is wider and it could be shifted over a little bit, you know, it's things like that. The eye shape is is a mile is a tick off, you know. You look at the eye here, get in focus there, and then you look at the eye here. It's slightly different look in the eyes. So, you know, you you do want to kind of try to keep with the details as much as possible but this artist has a keen eye keen eye and for him the ceiling is just not there he can just go as high as he wants for for example look at that little tiny detail right here get this little icky bicky thing and it's right there you see that when i see things like this i i go yeah that person is paying attention to detail and then I can say well you know why not keep keep that going like the angle of the flip why not make the angle of the flip here too you're never going to make the hair look exact in your drawing as you do in the original but you want to give the illusion the illusion that it's the same look at this tail I mean well done look at that I could see the same break in the hairs right here and here and the flip right here the shadow area you know what's interesting is he darkened his shadow area more than more than the original and so you know it, i i'm just kind of having a little fun here but but it, it, it's really cool um i just i just think that that he's done such a fantastic job i really do and uh, it's a pleasure to have him in our group so, you know, hopefully these uh, little bits that I'm going to share here uh, is going to be helpful. So let's, let's, let's work on the lighting because lighting is so important, all right? Now, again, this is a printout, okay? And this time uh, I printed out on my inkjet printer as opposed to my laser printer. Not that that's going to make any difference. And I also did it on drawing paper, which is a thicker 90 bond paper, excuse me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can, I can illustrate better than when I was using copy paper previously. So, but it's still, it's a printout. If I wanted to erase this, I could not. So I, I can only do limited changes. But since we're working on the lighting and the light parts are already in here, I could just focus on shadowing. So let's just see what we can do with the shadowing. So I'm just going to come in here with... This is a carbon sketch pencil. So this is carbon. And I believe the artist mentioned he used carbon on his uh, drawing here. So uh, it should it should be something that he has in his, in his arsenal. Okay. And let me see what I can do with this on here. And I'm looking at exactly where the shadows are. And he has them in here. And he has them in the right shape, which is excellent. But I'm taking out the highlights of those uh, grass blades because they don't need to be in there because they're, they're nowhere to be seen in the original. Would have saved a lot of time in drawing too, you know. But, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that uh, he, you know, he put it in there nice and light. This paw, or yeah, that looks like that's a leg. I should say, not the paw. It looks like he's, the dog's got it curled underneath there because it's running. It's like a beautiful dog. 
and uh, we have this should be all in shadow and you look at the shadow here and the shadow here you have two different shades of this same shadow so I definitely want to make sure for example here that it is lighter than next to it here okay so that everything is illustrated correctly okay so two different I notice with this carbon pencil on this printout is not going to give me what I want it's going to be a little on the grainy side which I don't like for illustration purposes so let me see what I can do to adjust this and I'm going to try a different pencil let's see if this one will this is that Marie's one that I broke in the last critique video as we'll put it to work okay so we have all this area here just needs to be darkened up hopefully we can do it I'm using my finger here because I want to give it a nice uniform smooth shadow look to it rather than these harsh pencil lines which unfortunately happens in this situation because of using this paper but that looks pretty good and that doesn't look at that Whew. all right so we shadow that down okay now up here, and if I can get that to blend a little better too, because it's smoother in the original, so let's get it to be a little more realistic here. Okay. As long as we keep the tone different between the shadow and here, we're golden. All right. So <clears throat> if we look closely here, we can see shadow here, and then we see it's shadow here, but there is two different shades here, right? Okay. So here, I have shadow here, okay, and this is the paw part right here. So this needs to be mildly lighter, but still in shadow. So in this case here, and I got carbon and this pencil in here. So let me see what I can take off, because I've got a little too much here. So I'll just use this Q-tip and that's going to be used to actually lighten this leg. Okay, and then I'm going to use some of it to blend in this area that is actually too bright. Alright, and there you go. So, so you can see that I have made that transition there. Okay. See that? All right. You can go for the same shape and everything too. This this one here, this drawing here, slightly, you know, slightly larger. So I can't make it exact. You look at the feet are a little. This is bigger than this one here, um, and that that may just be looking at the rest of it here. This this one may be a little closer to us on the printout. They were both slightly different resolutions when I downloaded it, so uh, I had to compensate to try to get this to print as close as possible, but it may be off just a little bit, so I'm not going to get into the fine, fine, fine details because that's not the point of this uh, video. Now we have this area right here needs to be shadowed to more reflect the reality of what was here. So just with a very light hand, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to apply see where he has that there
See that shadow there is directly down from the mouth, so I have to make sure that I have that there. You have this negative space here. You can see that shape right there. I need to maintain that shape here. And he's accounted for this shape here, here, except this one, this one is a little more rounded, so I'm going to take the liberty to round it up a little bit there. Just that little bit, not a big deal. And I I can't erase what's already there because this has a little more of a slant up in the uh, um, original. But anyway, neither here nor there, right? Okay. Uh, look underneath the mouth. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to zoom this in here. All right. There's a lot of this white U here compared to the original. That could be taken out too. I'm going to, I'm not going to bother doing that because again, that's, I'm not going to be touching every single detail. It's a lot easier to come in and start nicky picking and I'm not going to nicky pick. I'm just going to stick with the subject here. So let's just get the shading in here to uh, reflect the shadows. Okay. As best as we can is. Yes, that's a word. Somewhere. All right. Okay. I'm looking at the shape. I need that shape here. Okay. And I'm not going to be able to get it because I'm going to, I'd have to make some changes here to get that exact shape in there. But I get close. Um, let's see. Because I can't erase anything. We can we can dippity doo dah right here. Okay, so that unfortunately I can't get that same shape. This one here is angled down this way, this is angled that away. So anyway, it's all in the details. Just have to kind of eye it, walk away from it, come back. You know, when I'm drawing my portraits and stuff, I always come back and I look at it from a distance and so forth, and I can always spot out things that I miss, shapes missed. I do it all the time. I'm not immune to it, okay? Not afraid to admit it. Just like I made that big old mistake in that one uh, drawing I did. I did a video saying I quit <laughs> because, you know, we all make little errors and that's all part of the process. You know, sometimes you don't get it the first time you go through. You just get up, shake the dust off your feet and try again. Okay, this is going to end up being a little lighter than here, so I want to make sure I catch that. This is kind of coming down to here. We had already put up that little lip right there. Wish this, get this pencil to work here. Okay. Let me just get this in here. All right, so this comes down in here, and then we start branching off on a lighter shade down here. See if I can transfer any of this, and then I won't have to get too dark there. Let's use some of this. This is the fun part when you can just you can come in here and you can use your finger and then just start a now I don't mean I don't intend for you to use your finger like I am, okay guys. This if this was my drawing, I would not be doing this with my finger. Remember that. But I'm illustrating it on a printout. And for that reason, it gives me some liberties to come in here and get the right tone in here. That's not going to blend. This this is not going to blend, is it? No. Yes, 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 yes. I'll get to you. Ah, that iPhone. Okay. Let 
I just want to get this smoothed out a little bit. I don't want these harsh lines in here. Okay, I can see that we need some more, we need some more love right here. And uh, there. Okay, so this is going to need a little bit of adjustment. All right. This is my takeaway pencil here. No, this is my takeaway pencil here. Little eraser thing. And I want to get that shape. So I'm going to get this shape here. You see this pointed area here? I want to kind of get that illustrated or at least implied that it is there. Little highlight in the fur right there. Okay. Dark here. Make sure I don't have any transitional lines. It's just the shade is lighter here where it goes to here. And I see that it is a little bit on the darker side, but only mildly. Let me see if I can scoot some of that off just real gently with this eraser pencil. And a loss I can. And a lossy. And a lossy I can. Yes. All right. Little bit of lightness here for the transition. Yeah, baby. I think. We are getting somewhere here. Okay. All right. I like that. Okay, so I think that works as well as it can. Shadows here. Really dark in here. Okay, we need to get that in there. Okay. And I'll use this guy. And then we need a little bit of darkening here. Okay, because it doesn't have that kind of brightness in the original. So let's get that. Give me some more material there, will you? Alright. There we go. Yeah. I love how the lighting just, if you get the lighting right, it just brings it out the drawing so much more realistically. It's a very simple thing when you think about it. All you're doing is getting in here and just darkening things a little bit more. Okay. And all this has to be darker. So let me put some material down then I'll blend it. Shade. Blend, shade, blend. Okay. I'm going to put most of it right here, right in this area here, and then I'm going to blend it out so that this feathering end here will be lighter, mildly lighter than here. So see if you can see the difference here. Okay, see how dark it is right here? Then notice how it's just mildly lighter here. So you can lay down your dark material right here, and then you can blend it out. And you'll even give a more smoother effect on the perimeter there. So let me just pile on my stuff here. Okay. Just like that. All right. And then I'm going to go and I'm just going to see if I can blend that out. Now on this paper, maybe not as easy to do. But that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to, or it's one technique I should say to do, all right, is put your material where it's the darkest and then you blend it out. This 
is all darker, so might as well get that done too. I need more material. I'll put it down. Given a nice blurred shadowed effect. some of the dark specks that that's caused by this pencil on this paper here okay you don't have any harsh so you want to get rid of the harsh let me get rid of some of this harshness get it a little more there we go, much better. Get a little bit of shadowing on the paw here. It's missing. It really needs that little bit of realism there. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. Get that shape correct. There we go. Yeah. I'm liking that. Okay, a little lighter here. Don't want to go too dark. Yeah, a little bit right there. Okay. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay, we got to get that little highlight out of there. That shouldn't be there. Let's get that dimmed down on that leg. Then I can bring out the slight reflective light. Okay. It comes in like so. Again, we're still focusing simply on lighting here. Shadows. Okay. Different lighting tones. Okay, bring that down. Oh boy, I'm loving that. I am so loving that. Just giving a little realism to an already fantastic drawing. That's all it is. Okay, we want to 
take some of that harsh lines that's on there. If I can remove it with this eraser, that would be really j -j 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 jolly. Okay. Uh, let's get a little highlight going up here. Can I do that? Can is it possible? Yeah, I got a little bit. Not bad. Okay. So that dark one thing there doesn't go there. Let me get that out. So working on a laser, I mean a inkjet printer on this paper actually gives me a little more control than I was able to do with the copy paper on the laser printer. So slowly but surely I'm gonna have some ways of doing this. This is good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So this should be blended down just a little little bit. It's a little grainy for me, but that's not the artist's fault. That's that's my tools here. Blame it on the tools. That's it. Okay, this bridge right here. Okay. I might I'm looking at shapes to help me see all the details that I want. I don't want to see the hair. I don't want to see the mouth. I don't want to see the eye. I try not to see the individual items, but I try to see the shape, the olive shapes, okay, the U shapes, the V shapes, the moon shapes around the shadows of the nose, which that's another thing. This, this whole side of this nose should be blackened out here. So just notice that, come in here, there should be no highlight on this side of the nose, see there is none, and so there was one here, you got to take it out, okay, and you lighten it down, sweet molasses, okay, this whole area here is also darkened. So I'm going to darken it with what's already on my Q-tip. See what happens with that. Take some more material, bring it over here. Take some more material from here, bring it over here. Oh, this is so much fun, guys. You have no idea how I'm enjoying this. And I enjoy working with you guys on this stuff. It's like having friends with a common interest. You know what I'm saying? Boy, just look at that. You know, when, when a plan comes together, how can you not be happy about that, right? Let's get that all toned down. Like it should be toned down. Okay. And here obviously is slightly darker. Okay. About right there. Okay. Blend it. Give it that smooth effect. Okay. Smooth. So you can see the you can see the dark going to the lighter. You get this light reflection going on right underneath, right there. Look at that. We get that. We get that so close, right? So close. Okay. I can't change anything here. Um, the mouth is a different shape. This one is this way, and this one is this way. So I'm going to leave that alone, of course, and. But yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so we're still dealing with, there's no highlight, should be no highlight right there. Let's get that out of there. Okay, don't be afraid to go dark. I say that in so many of my videos. Don't be afraid to go dark. Dark is good for contrast. 
Okay, this all needs to be darker, so I'm going to go darker. What's the risk? You can just take it off, as long as you don't push it in, right? You can just take it off, so don't be afraid to go dark with your, with your drawings, all right? Okay, now let's see if we can keep the shade differences alive while darkening this area right here. So, sweet. Notice how much time I've spent just on this part alone, because it may not look important, but it is important. Okay, so if you look really closely here, try to get, get the glare out of there, you'll see that your dark areas go right up here. This area is all dark right here. Then it just goes mildly lighter here. The shade difference is very small from here to here, but it's there. And you need to have that in there. So, you'll see that that's what I'm attempting. Here's the dark. My area here is actually lighter than here, so I still need to keep working on this. And if you look here, you want to make sure you don't just have some kind of a line going on here. So I have to diffuse that as well as trying to get this other part darkened up. So I'm adding material and then I'm blending it over. And just lightly doing this with my fingers here. I don't want to I don't want to make any kind of drastic dark areas here. I have a very strange situation for this filming here. This table is flat. My drawing table is over there and it tilts up towards me. So when my light comes down I can see things here and it doesn't reflect back into my eyes. Here on this table I have a camera that's straight mounted straight above me and the light comes straight down. Normally on this table uh, I do like product reviews and pencil tests and things like that. But it, it's easy for me to kind of come over here and just do a quick critique on this table rather than setting up that. Plus I have to take my portrait off of the table and I'm not done with her yet. And so I don't want to really move it. So for that case, I'm looking at this from an angle and the light's coming down like this, so it, it, the shades are a little, comp, a little harder for me to see. I have to actually tilt it like this so that I can see how things are coming along. And so you may spot things that I might not spot because I'm looking at it in an angle and the lighting is just not as uh, good as it is over there. But, you know, we do what we can. Right? Right. Okay. But I think, it, I think you can see the differences of what a little bit of an adjustment on lighting can do. You know, the playing with the shadows and darkening, darkening areas that, that needs that needs to be uh, darkened. There's no highlight here, so I'm just going to mildly take that out. Okay, there's no highlight here. Take that out. Okay. This area here, no highlight fur here. Take that out. Dim this down a little bit here. I'm using my Q-tip to do this because I could do it so subtly rather than making it a drastic change. 
Okay, I'm going to take some of these out here to give it a kind of a smooth look. Here, for example, some details that I don't see in the original. So I know he's taking some liberties, which is fine. It's an artist's prerogative. I am only going at this from the angle of a realistic portrait as opposed to a drawing of a dog. See this whole area here needs to be keyed down. Okay, I'm running out of material on my Q-tip. I'm going to borrow it here. You might see a bunch of lines or something because of the reflection of the of the um, light and paper here. I'll try to deal with that. I'm going to fuzz this out a little bit so it's not so harsh as best I can. But I think we've come pretty close to the end here of this critique because I think you I think I've done enough here to at least illustrate. I mean, remark in the comments below if if you think I did not or you have some other opinions. But, uh, taking the highlights off of this side of the dog that isn't isn't there in the photo. Okay. Toning down some of the brightness. And I can bring out some that actually does exist, like, like right here. If I can. Again, you know, it's, it's only so much you can erase on a printout, but... I'll just, I'll just do that like that. Let's see if I can get any kind of a highlight to show up there. There's some. There's some. I'm going to rub this paper off is what I'm going to do. And then over here, another detail highlight. Can I rub that off? Oh, come on, let me rub it off. Please. All right. All right, folks. Uh, I, think I've, I think I've got the, the point across. Take a look at that. All right. And just notice that by just doing a little bit of lighting adjustment, shades, get those darker shades in there, okay, blur out some of those highlights that aren't actually there in the original and so forth, you can actually bring your drawing way closer to the actual photo. And that is what we try to achieve is realism. And it could be as simple as once you've got the details right, which he's done a great job in drawing the actual dog itself before he got into the shading and blending and all that. Look at how we can just step that up just a little bit more. And in case the camera is bringing out things that is nasty because of the, uh, the point that this is printer paper, or it's actually it's drawing paper, but it's been on, on a printer. I'm gonna see if I can get the lighting out of there, the, the harsh light that I have above me. Now I'll take a look at the two, okay? And see what a little bit of shadow can do for your drawing. All right, there you go, folks. I hope you like this critique video. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click that notification bell so that you'll be informed of my next upload. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.